بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب whoever honors the symbols of Allah whoever respects the signs of Allah whoever venerates the sacraments of Allah, then that is a sign and indication of piety of the heart. Here a point which is important and imperative for every believer, adab and etiquette, which has left the ummah, ad-deen al-adab kulluhu, Deen is pure, thoroughbred, adab and respect. Respect for Allah, respect for the Rasul of Allah. Anything connected, whether it's the time, whether it's the place, a person who's going for Hajj, Umrah, these are the most Mubarak places on earth which require the highest level of adab and respect. Maulana Yusuf Ramlali used to say, when you are making tawaf, know the value of every step. For remember, your footstep is falling on a step of 124,000 Anbiya. How many Anbiya? step coincides with yours. How many Sahaba footsteps coincides? How many awliya? So do not take this amal lightly. So when a person has adab and we are highlighting this point because it is a very, very, very important ingredient not only in those Mubarak places, but wherever we else we are in life, you find people reading the Qur'an, relaxing, uh, feet facing the Qur'an, etc. Adab is a, a thing which needs to be inculcated. In the olden days when Jamaat used to come, ulama used to come, then the Musturat ladies used to say, bring my scarf, bring my scarf. So people you say, look at this aunties here, they just wear the scarf in the jamaat when Maulana comes. And I tell them, what are you saying? The fact that she's got the ihsas, she's got the awareness that this Allah wala, this friend of Allah, this person has donned the garb of the Nabi of Allah, there's some adab in front of them. That's a great sifat. Don't undermine. Nowadays, people through social media post their pictures for one and all, sundry to see. So that adab has respect, that respect adab has left the ummah, it's dissipated. At least she's got the haya, the modesty to prompt her for that. That's a good salient feature. Some people in the olden days when Ramadan used to come, then they should take cloths and they should cover their TVs. So the whole of Ramadan there was a parda. So we should make joke those days that people make parda of their TVs, but they don't make parda of their wives and their daughters. Nevertheless, but now the, the, we can mock at it, make a joke at it, laugh at it, but in reality this is a great adab, at least Ramadan is a Mubarak month and a person has the respect and the decency to cover the television. So appreciate and value, that's adab, at least something has been done. Comparatively nowadays in front of the Baytullah people are busy making videos, making movies, blogging, taking selfies. Ringtones, music has been blasted in front of the Haramain on the Mataf, in front of the Rawdha Mubarak. So, 
where the ummah should be, where our perspective, where our direction should be, where should our focus be, and how much have these instruments stretched, snatched away the anwarat and the nur of deen. So a screen by default is black. We want these black screens when we switch on to brighten our lives. It's only going to increase in darkness. So that same screen which a person watched someone committing zina, pornography, porn, is where strangers get together, they have rituals of zina. It is a, a, a headquarter, a, a, an action which is perpetrating, they're not married, they're strangers and they are committing haram. So, uh, a person, the fact that on this instrument where zina is being committed and a person watches this zina or he commits other gunas through the cell phone where he chats with strangers, he openly violates Allah's commands, he promotes his sin. On this very instruments, which are instruments of destruction, how dark are the hearts that these very people take those instruments which they broke Allah's command and continuous, continuously break Allah's commands on the mataf in Masjid al -Nabawi in front of the Baytullah and they don't have a guilty conscience. The Baytullah is black and the light of Allah is reflected in the Baytullah. So either we are attracted to the Baytullah, the Kaaba and get the Noor of Allah or the black screens that has become the Baytullah. People make tawaf, they walk all the time with the cell phones in their pockets, so they make into off what they pay to pay to shaitan. Likewise, uh, when you uh, somebody makes ruku and such that to an idol, when you lower in your gaze, you're making ruku to these instruments. That's a topic on its own for another time. But this point has been mentioned is adab in front of Allah that a person is in darkness and this act, for example, a, 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 a pornographic scene, the person committing the crime, that crime can take them to Jahannam and take millions, millions of people to Jahannam. And a person is watching that absurd nude scene taking pleasure when he should be crying tears of blood that this female, this male is going to go to Jahannam and they'll be taking millions to Jahannam. So we don't have that awareness. There's like a couple that woke up in the morning and the husband tells the wife, did you hear the storm last night? So the wife said, no. Was there thunder? Husband said, no, it was terrible, man. It sounded like the end of the world. So the wife said, it was that serious of a situation. Why didn't you wake me up? You know, I can't sleep when it thunders. You know, I can't sleep. When it thunders, so we saw asleep, the thunder, the, the tremors, the tsunamis, the floods, the covids, every sign, the deaths, the hospitals, the sickness, the close to death, the fevers, the ventilator, the janazas, the lust goes on, the prelude to war, all the signs of war, all the signs of destruction, all the signs of shortage, all the signs are in front of us. Wahum anha muridun. It is not enough. Our hearts are so dark. These signs cannot be a catalyst. Then what else is going to be? What are we waiting for? Who are we waiting for? When will they change? Still at it at the same things, our same routine every day. We're getting on and on and on. So, am I here on earth to find Allah? Am I here to pastime? 
enjoy life go to the beta lots so another holiday journey book with this agent yeah who's got the best accommodation best transport best this year best facilities best food if it's not up to our standard we got problem with agents we got problem with that we got to promote everybody besides ourselves it's because we don't have our objective our maqsad our purpose a person can have the lowest package with the least facilities but that be the best hajj because he's got his priorities and a person will have the contrary, the best, the first class of everything. But he'll be second grade because he's going there for another purpose. So where am I? Where should I be going to? Which, which direction? There was a libra librarian who was fast asleep, three o'clock in the morning, phone rings, voice on the other end, what time does the library open? So the librarian who's half asleep, nine o'clock and upset and what's the idea of calling me at this time of the night? So the person now they said, not until nine o'clock, like in, in, in stress panic mode, very disappointed. No, I'm telling you again, not until nine o'clock. Now the librarian's upset. But what do you want to do? It is so important before nine o'clock. So call again, disappointed. I don't want to get in, I want to get out. They were stuck in the library. They were stuck in the library. So, where the story is, where you think you are, and where you're supposed to be, it's two different things. I think so, I'm a Musalli. I'm not a Musalli. What kind of salat? I think so, I'm a Dhakir. I'm not a Dhakir. I think so, I'm a Haji. But I'm not a Haji. So I, I, am, I, am I going to catch up uh, on, on dunya and, and buy things so I've got my bags full of dunya and I've sorted my dunya out? Or I'm there to clean up my mistakes, every error that I made between my Allah and myself. This is a moment to make peace with my Allah. We don't need to go there, it starts now, yeah, for us to make a decision. I need to make peace with my Allah. I need to start a new chapter. So, is it a quota? I've been called, I've submitted my name and I've been called. And uh, I'm going to get my passport stamped, Haji Saab. I will get the title. So people on earth are calling me Haji Saab. But does Allah know my name? In the Asman am I known? Haji Bhai Padia once I was a Mashra, Jamaat's going to different countries, etc. And uh, the, the, the suggestions were going to a certain extreme. So Haji Bhai Padia Rahmatullah Ali rebuked the brothers. And said, today people, our brothers, our satis have become stamp collectors. We all collectors. We fill our passports of different countries. So we can have this accolade. Been to this country, I've been in Jamaat in this country. It's just to fill a passport. So we can tell people, show the world. So we just stamp collectors. So. I'm fulfilling, I'm doing the amal, I've told everybody I'm going for Umrah, I've told people I'm going for Hajj. But am I a Mu'atamir, am I a Haji? In the Asman, fitting the criteria and the standard. In every country for a certain product, for it to be recognized, South Africa SABS, South African Bureau of Standards, we have ISO, etc. So, based on the organization will lay standard, qualify and quantify a product. Some standards are very high. Once all the boxes are ticked, does that product qualify for that? So Hajj Umrah, there should be a, a, a box which I need to be ticking. What sifat, what quality, what kefiyat, what condition, what I need to get right. And it starts from now. So is it a, it's, it's, it's a gratification, it's a uh, glorified scheme where I console myself as a haji or do I have a real target behind it? 
hi G or no hi G G ha I'm ready to find my Allah that should be our slogan so respect is earned if you want Allah to respect you you need to earn it honesty is appreciated are we genuine kunu masadiqeen Abu Bakr Siddiq I'm saying I'm going to these Mubarak places but am I genuine in my statement trust is gained trust is gained you, 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 you are trustworthy when you prove it and loyalty is returned if I am loyal to my Allah kama to deen to dan so when you show Allah how loyal you are then Allah will open the keys to his treasure Every person teaches people how to treat them. How you treat people, you'll be treated like that. It reciprocates. Your actions decide who your leaders are. So a person has, has to have a reverence, the azmat of these Mubarak places. It, it is not just a formality, it is not just my neighbor has been called up and I needed to do my Hajj, so I'm doing my Hajj. Adhan is being given. Going to the Masjid, I finish my Salah. But did I just read Salah? Or did I perform Salah? How Salah should have been performed. Some people who go to the gym, they do exercise. So every day as they are doing training, one hour, one and a half hour, they got their personal trainers. Every day that they go to the gym, they benefit. They've got a course, they've got a routine, they've got a diet. You can see it physically. Somebody else goes to the gym, they may be going once a week, twice a week, thrice a week, five times a week. But somebody who goes every day of the week almost, has been there for 30 years. But there's zero benefit. You can't even lift the lightest weight. What's the difference between the two? The one person is a registered member of the gym. The other person is a registered employee. He's just doing a job. He can be the janitor, he can be the cleaner. He's going to the gym every day. But he's not going to pick up any muscle. He just blow and he falls down. Because he's not doing the work in the place that should have been done. He has to be on the treadmill, he has to do his reps, he needs to do each exercise for different muscles with a trainer. The ulama, who am I going with before the journey? What did I adab? What etiquettes? What rules? What preparation in the journey? Who's sabat? Who's company? Which ulama? What are the trainers? Hassan Basra Allah you say at Tuhidu Mujibun Yujibul Iman that Tuhid is such a thing which demands it necessitates Iman. Fumalla Iman alo fala tuhid alo. No Iman, no Tuhid. Well Iman Mujib Yujibu Sharia. And Iman is such a thing, it brings Sharia, it compels, makes one fall under the dictates of Sharia. Deen. Fumalla Sharia talo fala iman alo wala tuhid. You don't have deen, you don't have iman, you don't have tawheed. Externally, deen needs to be visible. Was sharia to? And the rules, the laws. Somebody went to Maktab, Assalamu Alaikum Malina, Assalamu Alaikum Madrasa, Chutti. When's the last time we studied? The only time we open our kitabs is when our kids come. But learn Quran with Tajweed, learn all the morning, evening adiyah, daily adiyah in different places. In other terms, well, Go to the ulama, study, daily masail, somebody is doing business, what's the masla of business? Somebody is getting married, what's the rights the husband and wife? Every aspect, every avenue of, of deen, the door is not closed to learning deen. So we've, we've embarked on learning secular education and made it a maqsad, but deen was sharia to mujibun yujibul adab. Then he says the last part, the deen will induce adab, it will oblige one, it will compel one to have this adab because deen is teaching you adab, you go to the masjid, etiquette of the masjid. 
You're eating, adab of eating. You're going to sleep, adab of sleeping. You're going to relieve yourself, adab of the relieving oneself. Then he concludes, فَمَنْ لَا أَدَبَ لَهُ لَا شَرِيَةَ لَهُ وَلَا إِمَانَ لَهُ وَلَا تَوْحِيدَ If you don't have adab, you don't have shariat. If you don't have shariat, you don't have iman. If you don't have iman, you don't have tawheed. If you don't have tawheed, you have nothing. So where am I going? Where's my end game? Abu Ali, rahimahullah, you say, تَرْكُ الْأَدَبْ مُوْجِبٌ يُجِبُ التَّرْدْ When you leave adab, then it necessitates, it uh, makes incumbent for a person to be rejected. And eventually, Radda ila siyasatil dawab. And he becomes an animal. The, the law of the jungle, he starts applying that. Nobody harmed you, you harmed him. Somebody does good to you, you harmed him. Law of the jungle. So does adab of Allah, this journey is a journey of a lover to his beloved. Malatan not only say, whoever is more romantic will get closer to Allah faster. Whoever is more romantic will get closer to Allah faster. So a wife, husband, it's ishqa majazi. It's, it's a taster for ishqa haqiqi, the real love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yahya ibn Mu'aj will say, Man ta'adab bi adbillah, sara min ahli mahabbatillah. When you treat Allah, treat deen, love life with adab and etiquettes, you will become the beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bishar Hafi says, I was on the plane of Arafat. I said, oh, man, crying uncontrollably. And then he started saying, Ash'ar. How great is this Allah, free from all faults, even though we should be expressing thanks to this Allah by being in sajda on thorns and heated needles. Then too, we shall not be able to praise Allah a fraction, one tenth of his favors. No, not one hundredth, no, not one hundredth thereof, not a fraction. Then he continued to Ashar, Allah, how often have I sinned against you? And I never remembered you in my sin. How often we commit good now? We don't remember Allah. That regret, Allah is watching. Then he continues, Oh Allah, you have remembered me in unseen ways and I never remembered you. How often Allah have I not in ignorance? Remove the veil from my soul when I sinned. Yet with your mercy, you covered my guna. I unveiled sins and you veiled my guna. Then Bishar says that I lost sight of him and asked people, who else is he? He says, Abu Bayt Khawas, the great saint of the Zamana. They said about him that for 70 years he never lifted his face up to the sky. Imagine Adab, we're talking of Adab. Seventy years passed and he never lifted his face up to the sky. Somebody asked him why. He said, I'm ashamed. How can I lift up the sinful face to this great Allah, to this great benefactor, to Rabbul Alameen, the Rabb of the worlds, the Rabb of man, in jinn, Rabbul Nas, Rabbu Aba'ikum al Awaleen, the Rabb. So, Adab is very important, and this Adab starts from now. We need to ponder and we need to think in which direction we are going and see how we can amplify the benefit of this journey by understanding the Adab of these Mubarak places. The Amal for today is. The niya that I'm going for Hajj Umrah, may Allah take me in those Mubarak places. Man kharaja fi hadal wajhi li hajj. Anybody goes for Hajj or Umrah, fama tafihi, and he passes away. Lam yurad wa lam yuhasab. He will not be brought before Allah. He will not have to give any account for his deeds. Wa qila lahu. And he will be told, no, it's up, get up. You go directly to Jannah. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ